What's up, friends? I discovered something. It's called the Gender Tag Project, and it basically encourages people, anybody, really, man, woman, straight, trans, gay, queer, to make videos about their experience with gender. And because I have a couple of things to say about that, <laughs> when I discovered it, I was like, yep, I'm gonna make a video about this. So here we are. Um, the project was started by another YouTuber. I will link her channel up here. Thanks so much for starting it. Shout out to you, you rock. There's basically 10 questions, 10 prompts that I will be answering as part of this. And another reason why I want to make this video is there's this part of me that needs more love. That part of me is my androgynous, queer, tomboyish self. And as I've made a couple of videos in the past about my coming out story and traveling as a queer woman, but I feel like there's, I have so much to talk about and also so much to process and heal for myself because it hasn't been a very straightforward, or shall I say, gay forward journey. <laughs> um, and I want to share more of this process that I've been going through with all of this um, and still I'm going through and I know there's many other queer people out there people also that are non-binary <laughs> um, who are neither this one thing nor necessarily the other thing somewhere in between on the gray scale which is what I kind of identify with especially when it comes to gender I'm very much non-binary with the way I look and just feel about myself and it's something that I come to terms with more and more in a way that I can actually express it and own it and integrate that part of myself and love it. So it's taken me a very long time. <laughs> There's a lot of work still to be done, a lot of de-shaming that needs to be done. So I'd like to be part of this. Anyway, let's dive right into those 10 questions. I'm just getting so hot in here. <sighs> Oh, maybe it's also a sign of just how this topic and all of this just kind of heats me up still because there's a lot of emotions for me around all of this. All right, so the gender tag. Question number one. How do you self-identify your gender and what does that definition mean to you? So I have to say up front, I didn't really look at the questions very much. I did look at them briefly, but I didn't really think about them much. So this really all comes from the heart and from my essence. I identify on the outside as a woman because I have a vagina and I have breasts and I do like both of them and I care for them a lot. And I do like being a woman, but on the inside, really, if we just take away all of these labels, um, in binary ways of looking at gender, I'm very much non-binary. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a queer non-binary human being who is somewhere in the middle um, and there's a huge white gray scale. Mostly because also I'm an androgynous woman, not just for the clothing that I wear, but also just how my body is built and how I move. There is, there's this masculine side of me um, on the inside and on the outside and then there's a lot of feminine parts of me obviously i mean we we all have these two of these energies but i'm also talking about the characteristics the way i look um the way i feel and i very much draw from both camps that make up my identity and my personality question number two what pronouns honor you I'm pretty cool with she, her, um, never had any big major um, identity crises around pronouns. Um, I do, in the end, um, feel like they feel true to me as being a she, her, yeah. Question number three, describe the style of clothing that you most often wear. So, <laughs> interesting uh i don't think i've ever described my clothing very much i just kind of pull stuff out of the closet or my backpack i would say i'm definitely a tomboy i mix and match a little bit 
I like to wear loose shirts and baggish kind of um, pants and shorts. I like board shorts. Um, today, maybe I can get up. You can see I'm wearing these jeans shorts. They're from the men's section actually at Urban Outfitters. And this shirt, which is I think an extra large from the girl section. So I like to wear clothing that doesn't necessarily identify me as as being a girl or being a boy. Um, I like to wear whatever makes me feel comfortable. And most of the time though, it is more tomboy stuff. Things that definitely combine, you know. I, I've been going through phases my entire life where, you know, as a kid growing up, I'd wear more boy stuff. And then as a teenager, and in my early 20s, I tried really hard to be a girl. And so I was wearing a lot of, I tried anyway, skirts and dresses and makeup and had very long hair. And then I had my coming out and then I started to really embrace clothing that just really made me feel good and were more aligned to my inner identity. And so this is kind of what's come out of this. Um, I like it a bit minimalist and yet just clean, clean, clear, kind of, yeah. Question number four. Talk about your choices with body hair. How do you style your hair? Do you have facial hair? What do you choose to shave or choose not to shave? All right, so obviously with this hair, very clear to see for everybody, I eventually chose to cut it all off. I wore long hair for most of my life, except when I was up until, I don't know, maybe five, six, seven years old, then I let it grow mostly because that was expected of me. That's how I was conditioned. Um, that's how a girl was meant to be, having long hair. And then uh, as I had my coming out in my late 20s, when I was like 26, I slowly, slowly <laughs> started to cut my hair off to the point where it is now. And I really like it that way. This is not me making a statement of wanting to be a guy or any of that. It's just me feeling really comfortable with having this sort of haircut and having short hair. And I understand that for many other people out there, this means I want to look like a boy. And that really annoys me actually, because it's totally not the point. I'm generally quite into the removal of body hair, to be honest. And that's purely my own conscious choice that I've reflected on very much. Um, I shave my armpits every two or three days. I also shave my legs. I just love that feeling of not having hair. And uh, that was also one thing when I had sex for the first time with a woman and just feeling her skin and there was no hair on it. <laughs> I just love that. Um, which was in very stark contrast to being with men before who have a lot of hair and that's beautiful too, you know, for them. But my um, preference is no hair because it's just so soft and feeling that soft skin is really beautiful. And down here, <laughs> I get everything waxed off actually. So there's nothing left usually and I go waxing every I don't know, three, four, five weeks. I also get my eyebrows waxed very regularly. I'm pretty uh, into um, <laughs> just not having body hair for myself, but I don't expect that of my partner necessarily at all. Question number five, talk about cosmetics. Do you choose to wear makeup? Do you paint your nails? What type of soaps and perfumes do you use, if any? Well, I recently made a video about all my cosmetics and beauty essentials, so you kind of know what um, I'm into. I wear a tiny bit of makeup, so just a little bit underneath my eyes, I wear a concealer. Um, most days I also use a eyeliner. And every once in a while, a couple of times a month or so, I use a bit of mascara. Not today though. I don't paint my fingernails, but I do get pedicures done very frequently every few weeks. And right now there is a rainbow. And I usually always get a rainbow. There you go. <laughs> yeah. In terms of soaps, I like it natural. Um, if it's just a soap bar, that's cool for me too. My hair doesn't need a whole lot of 
shampoo and conditioner attention so and perfumes i don't really wear perfumes i used to wear perfumes from the girl section um these days i've moved on to more natural body sprays that are organic and that don't have these annoying chemical <laughs> scents to them but i do like smelling nice for sure question number six have you experienced being misgendered if so how often hell yeah <laughs> It actually happens quite frequently. A couple of examples where it happens a lot is at airports when I go to the public bathrooms and I go to the girls' bathroom and a lot of times I get looks. Um, sometimes even in Arabic countries I had that, that women would come up to me um, and they're in their burqa and stuff and they come and be like, you know, you're not supposed to be here in their Arabic language and I would then point to my breasts or, or whatever other um, very female feature on me and say, I'm a woman. And then eventually they'd be like, Ooh, oh my God, I'm sorry. They're quite embarrassed. So public bathrooms is an issue, especially in places where women don't look like me, um, where in places where women basically all have long hair and that's mostly in very traditional countries or developing countries basically all over central america um asia arabic countries so that's why i've had most of my issues um and that happens basically all the time when i go to the bathroom i always feel a bit insecure but also when i was in the united states and i'd go into coffee shopping because there people always address you with sir or madam a lot of times i would get approached as um how can i help you sir and mostly i believe that people are just doing their job and they see so many faces coming in and out and they just look up quickly and they see short hair and immediately they think i'm a guy and also depending on the season i might be wearing you know maybe a hoodie or you know baggy pants and so they see that and immediately think i'm a guy um whereas for example here in bali because i also wear a lot of singlets and you know like maybe it's just because i also show more skin that looks more femaleish. um i don't get as confused much it happens that i get misgendered quite frequently question number seven do you experience dysphoria and how does that affect you for those of you that don't know what dysphoria is i'll just read out the uh, definition it happens when a person experiences discomfort or distress because there is a mismatch between their biological sex and gender identity. Um, my answer to that is no, I don't experience dysphoria. I've always been pretty um, in tune and aligned with um, who I am as a woman and the gender and the sex that I have. Question number eight, talk about children. Are you interested in having children? Would you want to carry a child if that were an option for you? Do you want to be the primary caretaker for any children you may have? Wow, very intense questions. I am interested in having children with the right partner. Um, once she steps into my life, then I'm very open to have children if she's two. Would I want to carry a child? Also very open to that. Um, I can, I might. Uh, I don't have to. Um, I would be okay if my partner carried the child. I'm okay for her to carry one child and I can carry the second child. I don't, I'm not set on having that experience of being pregnant and giving birth, but I'm very open to the experience. Um, I think it's something that I would, I don't know, I guess look into more as <laughs> these thoughts and ideas are a bit more on the horizon to actually turn into reality. But again, something that I would, not negotiate, but kind of feel into with my partner and how we both feel about that and how much she wants to carry. And But I'm not, I'm not, I don't have this fixed sort of idea of how all of this needs to happen. I'm also happy to adopt, for example. So that's definitely an option. Would I want to be the primary caretaker for any children? Again, I'm very open, very flexible. It can all be discussed as things come up. I don't I'm not set on this one idea of creating a family. So, all right, question number nine. Talk about money. Is it important to you to provide for a family financially if you choose to have one? Is it important 
to you that you earn more than any partner you may have? Do you prefer to pay for things like dates? Are you uncomfortable when others pay for you or offer to pay for you? <laughs> wow. Um, uh, it's not important for me to provide for a family financially. I would be able to. Um, my finances would allow for it and I do like taking care of my partner um, and I would also take care of our family if that just kind of worked out that way and um, but again I'm very open I'm not set on one way of doing things I would love to have a partner who earns good money as well but if she doesn't that's cool if she earns more money than me that's amazing as well you know whatever happens in whichever way is totally cool with me um i do like paying on dates <laughs> just because it's more out of wanting to make someone else feel good and and feel treated well and to, i like spoiling somebody but i'm also okay if someone pays for me <laughs> again um, i usually offer to pay first but i don't have to um, i'm very okay with being paid for <laughs> too. And last question, anything else you want to share about your experience with gender? I have quite a bit to talk about all of this and who I am as an androgynous, queer, non-binary. <laughs> um, and that would, I guess, go way beyond the scope of this video. I only wish that the world would one day not look at things just as black and white and man and woman and we could just all be more inclusive and we could just honor the the gray shades more and i wish i could go back to that child to that teenager who i was and tell her that it's totally cool the way she is and there's nothing to be ashamed of and that makes me very emotional right now <laughs> yeah I just want to give her a hug and just make her feel like she's fully accepted with how she wants to express herself yes as far as I can think back as far as I can remember I always wanted to be both I wanted to be a girl and I wanted to be a boy and it wasn't really supported and I wish it had been, but that's okay because I needed these lessons and I learned a lot from them and as I'm speaking right now, this is healing for me and I'm, I'm integrating this part of myself and starting to love this part of myself even more. So thank you so much for watching this, it means the world to me, it really does. Very interesting to answer these questions. <laughs> If you enjoyed it, give it a thumbs up. If you would like to make your own gender tag video, as I said, anybody can do it. You don't have to be one or the other, or queer, or man, woman. Anybody can participate in this tag challenge and answer these questions. So if you do, I'll put all the um, links below in the description box and also a link up here. Thank you for watching once again. I'll see you tomorrow in the next video. Bye. Mwah.